Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Right, there's a school of thought out there. There's two schools of thoughts, really. There's one to say the property market is stabilized. Um, yes, we've had all the incentives, but it's actually performing quite well. And it's going to carry on performing well because the economics are still there. We've got low interest rates. Uh, we've got a population that's now going back to work. The economy's picking up. Um, you've got a global economy and you've got actual shortages in property. Okay, so that's one school of thought. Another school of thought out there to say, look, there is going to be a certainly a market correction on the stock markets and that will bleed through the, the economy and there is going to be a crash um, as such and there's going to be a potential recession. So those two school of thoughts are out there. We're going to talk about them because it's very, very important. Although I'm a mortgage broker, okay, and I've set this channel up for information purposes only, and like all of my videos, it is for information purposes only. I'm also not a financial advisor. I'm certainly not uh, an advisor for stocks and shares, and I'm not telling you what to do around that. Um, this is just uh, a debate, really. And at the end of this debate, what I want you to do is watch this if you can. Uh, it will really help me, uh, and it will help all of us better understand what your options are and what your views are. So what I want you to do is make a comment. Let me know what you guys are doing about some of the topics that I will discuss. Um, and it's quite a long video, but I think it's worth it. It really is, guys. So just watch it and let me know what you think. Hi, it's Pai. I'm here from Niche Advice. Yes, it has been a long time. Yes, I've been busy writing lots of mortgages. And yes, I've got the dodgy tash back. Um, let's talk about a crash. Let's talk about whether there's going to be a crash or whether there's going to be a real big slowdown or, as the stock pickers call it, a market correction. Um, look, there's two school of thoughts here. And I've been watching a lot of content over the last few months. And reading a lot about the economy and the property market as such so there's two school of thoughts there's the there's the property people the the, the finance people the the people in lending they believe uh, from what i can see they believe that um they believe that there's going to be a mini boom they think that potentially property prices will probably go up uh, and it's going to be quite stable and although there will be some tapering down um, and we've already seen that slightly with with the market. Um, it's going to be a it's going to be a very good sort of next couple of years, and they think it's going to be a little mini boom. Um, the reason they're citing is you know um, interest rates are low, and they will look to remain low. Um, they believe there's a lot of money sitting in the sides that's waiting to come into the UK property market still, uh, and, and generally they just are quite upbeat about it. Then I've been watching content and reading a lot more content, not necessarily about the UK property market, but the global economy and specifically the stock markets. Um, look, the stock market has done fantastic. Some of the gains over the last year, year and a half, it's just been unbelievable. Okay, um, Certainly around the tech stocks, some of the growth stocks out there, some of the big funds, the ETFs out there, they've done fantastic. Right? There's no denying that. But there is a big consensus now forming that there's going to be a correction a market correction um and what that could what that could do to the wider economy now there could be a market correction so there could be a stock market down fall and it may not necessarily affect the real economy okay um so it's not just because there's a crash or there's there's a correction that that will automatically hit the economy and then we go into recession and all sorts of things will happen that's that's one school of thought the second school of thought is look this market i mean you you've got people like warren buffett who's probably the biggest stock investor ever he's just saying look this cannot continue this is this is not right and it's just not going to continue and it's just not going to go bigger and bigger and bigger and you know people piling in and they think they're going to you know going to get 30 40 50 100 200 percent returns okay and people are piling in right now and you know where the economy is doing this and i know it's recovering now after covid but it's still in a very weak position the stock market's just doing this it's just going up okay and then you've got all new trends happening you've got the crypto market crypto market's flying off out there everything everyone's touching everyone's making money and uh, you know everything's great um and that's got to stop it just cannot continue like this okay and you've got um i read an article um and i can't quite remember the company name but there's a big huge analytical company they sell data to world organizations to countries to government bodies to you know 
to everybody really and they're a huge company and they're stock they're listed on the stock market and they had just bought 50 million pounds worth of gold bars so you've got a data analytics company that all they do is provide data to world organizations okay renowned okay what are they doing buying 50 million pounds worth of gold bars not an ETF not a fund that's linked to gold bars right so what happens and this is what's happened historically is if there's a recession if they believe there's a market correction people look to put their cash historically in secure things such as gold gold and rare metals has generally have done quite well so and and although gold prices are not as high as what they were two years ago or whatever you've got to um you know they have we have seen an increase on this and here's, a, here's my disclaimer guys i'm not talking about this i'm just talking about general stuff i'm not an investment advisor i'm not a financial advisor i'm a mortgage broker okay so this is just for information purposes only with just as it is with all of my all of my stuff um i'm just looking at some of the some of the things around the market so you've got these these big people saying look there's a bit of a correction coming guys watch out you got the guys that um, you know called it uh, called the last crash and they've got a few hedge funds there's a hedge fund out there and they are you know being very very um, very 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 cautious on what's going to happen and they believe there's going to be a problem and they're taking short positions on uh, some of the big growth funds out there uh, like ARK the ARK fund has done very very well over the years growth fund so there is a big thing I mean th there is uh, certainly um, uh, I don't I don't even think some of the stock markets uh, stock pickers are saying that there's not going to be a correction some of them are saying that there is going to be a correction but we're in such great funds or we've got such growth companies that they're going to do well out of it okay um, but I think there's something coming and by that and I, I would love to hear because I'm undecided myself I have, I have to be honest with you right I would love to hear from yourselves and just telling me look what do you think what do you think this is going to happen we're all interested in property you wouldn't be uh, on my channel if you were not interested in property so our ultimate goal is where is this going to go how are we going to do well out of it or how are we going to protect ourselves out of it and I will touch on that but so I believe there's a concern and we can't be shielded from all of that okay we cannot be shielded the last crash happened because not because someone in Bromley wasn't paying their mortgage necessarily it was because someone some 10,000 people in Louisiana or in Houston or in I don't know California a lot of people because of the subprime bubble and the way lending was being done overseas predominantly and those overseas providers the big banks were American banks all of a sudden they were have, having their loans being defaulted on they will then didn't have enough money and capital and then they couldn't recapital them, rise themselves through the markets and hence they had to pull their pro uh, property um, they had to pull their products from the UK market and it caused the sort of a, uh, a reaction so that's if, if it comes that's how it's going to happen here it's nothing to do with is Knightsbridge going to do well it's nothing to do with am I going to do well out of Burnley on my HMO okay it's going to do with it's got to do with the overall market and how that market is affected like I said it doesn't necessarily just because there's a stock market crash it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to go through a recession and the property market is going to be hit okay but it's an option it's it's a it's a something that we have to consider as people looking into buy properties now what can we really do about uh, the crash <clears throat> well we don't know whether it's going to affect just because the stock market's going to crash or correct itself it doesn't necessarily it's going to hit the American um, property market and then our market okay it's a very different type of situation last time around the problem was around the lending sector and the banks not being capitalized and not being able to have access to money now a lot of those systems and processes have actually been put in place uh, in the past so the banks are actually well capitalized um, and that will you know that's helped things and there are systems in place for the Bank of England for the ECB through the the Fed reserves where borrowing facilities are a lot more you know we got hit for the first time nobody knew what they were doing so those systems are in place so that's a, a good thing okay um, from a UK perspective uh, although we've got a lot of debt 
Our actual interest rate on that debt is very, very low. We are a trusted economy, okay? Um, what was it in uh, Game of Thrones? Uh, the Lannisters always pay their debts. And, and, and I think we are a trusted economy. So what that means is we could still borrow relatively cheaper compared to everybody else. So the government may do what they did last time and what they're doing now is just borrow more money, okay? Um, which will soften the impact of any potential problems that could arise. Now, we have still got fundamental things that are going for the property market, okay? So doom and gloom over, we've got some really fundamentals here in the UK that means the, the, the property market, you know, long term will do well. One, not enough house buildings happening. Two, not enough properties have been built that people want to buy and live in. Okay, and that's really important. There are lots of new build flats going up, but um, a lot of people now are looking to buy, you know, houses and smaller houses and so forth and affordable houses. So there's still a, there's still a shortage of that. Uh, so what that means is uh, people are having to make compromises. So they're either looking to stay in rental accommodation for a little bit longer because the property prices are more expensive or, you know, they're looking to save up more or work more to buy a more expensive property. And there is a shortage, okay? Immigration is still happening, guys. I don't know, all of, that, all, of, all of that Brexit stuff. I mean, it's still here. Immigration is still here. You know, I do plenty of mortgages for people on Tier 1, Tier 2 visas, okay? Professional visas, okay? So, and there's still, there's lots of them, there's lots of them coming still. Uh, I hate to tell you guys, um, but um, that's happening. Okay, so there's still going to be a shortage and immigration is still happening. Yes, we may not be getting as much from Europe, but we're certainly trying to bring in talent from other countries. So that's another thing. So low interest rates. The government, I believe, will do everything in their power to bring the interest rates uh, or keep the interest rates as low as possible. So there will be external market pressures. Yes, there will be stock market pressures, they'll stop. But the government and whether it's conservative or labor, one thing's forgiven, they all understand how important um, the property market is to the wider economy in the UK. What do they do? Do you know what? I did videos and I, I'm hands up, I was wrong, okay? <clears throat> I did videos when the first pandemic when the pandemic first hit saying it's going to be absolute mayhem honestly i said it's going to be absolute mayhem. and you know what it it was for my business for the first couple of months okay until um until the the stamp duty stuff happened we were seeing a big slowdown okay we were so i wasn't wrong at all altogether but i underestimated the way the government, to be fair, this time around, could influence the market and influence um, uh, people's perception of their situation. Now, wrongly or rightly, you know, it's the, the school's out still because we haven't, you know, we're in a false sense of economy here, you know, and here and, the, and in the States. I was speaking to my friend in the States. You can't, you can't buy properties. You can't buy secondhand cars. There's, there's all sorts of shortages happening. So I think short term, this could be a, um, it could be good, but fun. Short term, we've got shortages anyway. Short term, the government's uh, monetary policy has actually done quite well. And we're coming out of things. We're, you know, heavily vaccinated in the economy. Economy's doing really well. Um, and it's picking up. Uh, and we've got a shortage of properties. Okay. And we're not building enough properties. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, long term, I think property is going to be, if, if you're in it for the long term, I think property is going to be uh, still a pretty decent bet out there. Um, I would, there's a one, th one sort of caution, I would say. The last time round with the crash, the people that lost out, quite a lot of the people that I know lost out were big buy-to-let investors that got, in, got themselves into commercials. Okay, so they were, you know, they had their 20 buy to lets and then started buying, you know, banks and started buying things, you know, shops and semi commercials and stuff and started gearing themselves off on the commercial front. That's a little bit different because what happened is as soon as the liquidation went, the, the, the banks didn't have enough funding, they called up in their loans. It's a commercial arrangement, it's different. It's not like your buy to let mortgage, okay. Uh, in fact, the people that had buy-to-let mortgages, because the rates were low, because a lot of them did self-certification, and the rental market and the property market stayed buoyant, they did really well. They're the people that have done fantastic out of the last crash, because they could easily get mortgages, right, rightly or wrongly, before the crash, 
and did very well because they were buying properties and the residential property market did fantastic. However, the people, uh, I, know, I know, I mean, I was getting calls years after it because I was in the mortgage. I was there, guys, right? So um, we, when we start, set up our business just after the crash, we were getting lots of calls from people that were saying, I had 10 properties. I had 15, 15 properties and we marketed ourselves. Funny enough, we did, we did a lot of bankruptcy mortgages back in the day um, simply because all of these people were property investors and they were bankrupt. They had to go bankrupt because they could, you know, the banks called in their loans. There was all sorts of things. There was defaulting everywhere. So caution, I've seen a lot of adverts, right, um, around investing into commercial property. One, the lenders are very cautious in that sector anyway, so you need to have decent experience. But I would be uh, a little bit cautious around commercials right now, um, especially if you're going to be running it as a commercial business. I know there's there's a lot of stuff going around which is valid because of the um, the, the legislation changes around changing of use. Uh, and I think that's actually a good growth market. And I'm, we're seeing a lot more of that. So change of use from commercial to residential or semi-commercial sort of aspects of doing things but you just gotta you just gotta watch out around commercials okay yes you know it's all great yes the tenant pays for this and tenant pays for that tenant pays for this but is the tenant gonna pay you okay when the when the shit hits the fan um so just just watch out around the commercial that's a, that's what i would say is that's the risk if you're looking at buy to let i think buy to let's long term i think as long as you buy do all right I think you'll be okay. Residential, I think you're going to be okay. There is never a good time to buy. You know, I, I, I speak to so many people, I'm going to wait until the property market. Don't get me wrong, even if we have a big stock market crash, this is doubtful that we're going to, I mean, we, we, we didn't have that much of a uh, movement on the property prices in 2008. We've just had um, the worst sort of thing that could happen to the global economy and the property market's doing this, okay? So it's, just because we're talking about a stock market crash doesn't mean that the property market is going to crash. I bought a property just before the last crash, okay? I sold the property a few years ago. I still made a lot of money on it, okay? So properties are a long-term vehicle, whether it's a residential or a buy-to-let, okay? So as long as you're not looking to, you know, flip a property in the next year or two, you're okay. But there are a lot of people that are looking to do that, okay? So my uh, what i would say is if you're someone who's just buying and selling and flipping and bit doing you know wheeling and dealing watch out okay be m have some money have some just in case money i would say not some quite a lot of just in case money okay so that's one if you are a residential person you know at the end of the day you're going to buy you're going to sell you're going to be in that property longer term rates are absolutely uh, you know really low so maybe look for a longer term fixed maybe look for a lender that's uh, got a product transfer policy so you don't have to you know go through lots of underwriting maybe in five years time look at things like this and that's where advice comes in okay that's where you really need to have a discussion with your broker because we can talk to you about different strategies okay there's a difference with a broker because you know we're not just an online form if you want an online form go and get an online form but you're not going to get what a broker does okay um so residential side you know you're buying a long term whether there's going to be a crash for the next five years or three years or two months really as long as you feel you're secure and also how is your job going to be affected if it does the market crash the stock market crash if it does come into the wider economy and recession happens what do you, you know what's your job so for me if it if there's a crash my job gets affected because less people would want to buy the market will slow down a little more then there will be less you know less business to go around okay so it will have a direct impact in my business okay however there'll be a lot more people looking to maybe debt consolidate there'll be a lot more people looking to uh, not move house and maybe do a remortgage pull some money out to do extensions so my risk strategy is look yes i'm going to lose on this purchase business but then i will have to concentrate on these type of businesses which i've been doing and that's that's how i am going to and and obviously i've got some savings i've got some money got, you know all of those things we've looked at it and said look if there's a crash not only properties may be affected so if we've got investment properties they will get affected the business could get affected so my earnings could get affected so what am i doing about that 
and also obviously the overall uh, the overall market markets if I've got some money in stocks and shares and bits and pieces they will get affected so I've had to look at it and review and I've done so I, I'll be honest with you in the last couple of weeks I've looked at my assets and liability I would say and said okay that's what I've got that's on a very good day what happens on a very bad day Okay, so I'll be interested to hear, hear what you guys think um, about where we're going, um, what you think will happen. Do you think just, you know, the stock market will just continue? Um, we're now coming out. I mean, look, we're now coming out of COVID um, and it's, you know, there's, there's a good feeling around the market. And as some of the other countries start catching up with their vaccinations and bits and pieces, we're just going to see a, you know, shoot off on the economy. And that's a legitimate a valid argument okay or do you think that uh, you know Delta's just about to hit America properly properly and I think they're feeling it and I think you know once that hits it they may have to do another lockdown because there's so many people that are unvaccinated over there now I'm not getting into the whole vaccine thing I'm just saying look literally there, there's a lot of people there's a big population out there and it's you know they they don't have a national health system and, and, and do you think that will have an impact uh, on the economy and if it hits America it's going to hit everybody um, we still haven't seen the the third world really recover what's going to happen with them so there are some global issues so it'll be interesting so there's two school of thoughts let me know if you're on it's all going to be all right and it's going to go on and I think the property market is actually going to do well let me know if you're in the school of no actually there's going to be a crash and you know property markets will go down prices will go down and let me know what you're doing to um, uh, from a liability perspective what you're doing with your stuff to protect yourself it'll be interesting when i'm having client i can learn from you you know i can learn from yourself so when i'm having client dialogues um you know one of the questions that i'm saying now is what what would you do if things go wrong if then things don't go planned um so yeah let me know it's been great guys i'm, I'm hoping to do this a lot more now but um take care leave a comment like and subscribe as usual and i'll catch you again the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.